40 years of working at Schechter. Wow, that's a long time. To have that level of, of commitment, of love, of passion for not only the game, but the players. That's some parallel. He saved lives, made lives. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations, Sandy. He's had so much success, and he has a formula, and he knows how to relate to young kids. Nobody comes close. X's and O's, to understanding a game plan, to attention to detail. I don't think you can talk about Salman Schechter or Golda Ock Academy without talking about Sandy. Sandy's just not a coach, he's a teacher. And he's a friend. He supports you emotionally. He was tyrannical. He would give his left, right, and if he had any more arms, he'd give those also. To know Sandy is to appreciate Sandy. When the ball stops bouncing, you truly get to know the person. All of a sudden, we kind of looked up last year and said, wow, 40 years. He named the AAU team the Roadrunners. It had nothing to do with the cartoon. Like everything in Sandy's life, he named it after his car. He had a red Plymouth Roadrunner with a black vinyl top. Solomon Schechter is named after a gas guzzling vehicle. Up to now, I still don't know Sandy's age. You mean Sandy's over 40? Well, it's, it's very hard to believe since Sandy figures he's only about 55 years old, so it's amazing that he's done so much in that short span, but uh, I think we might have some proof now that he has to be a little older than that. Sandy's official role is a PE teacher and a coach. There's no question, though, that he has a much wider role. I didn't realize how much he's done for so many people that we don't see and he doesn't flaunt. Sandy was the person who said to my sons, you can always pursue your dreams. The only one who can stop you from dreaming is yourself. Kyrie ridiculous! Inside, right down you. It is my honor to present Kyrie Irving of the Cleveland Cavaliers with the NBA Rookie of the Year Award. I'd like to thank my AU coach, Sandy Pione, every single day in a hot gym in Union, New Jersey. Um, every single day he picked me up in, in his uh, Windstar, his Windstar minivan. We used to pick up about five kids and he used to bring us to the gym every single day. He's so looking forward to the next kid he can help. Who's the next kid I can take out of the shadows and bring him to light and turn him into a great basketball player? I first met Sandy at the Newark YMCA. His message to me clicked instantly. I met Sandy when I was a senior in high school. He put basketball in my mind because it wasn't in my mind or my heart. He saw something in me that I didn't see. I was about 6'6". At the time, I was playing soccer. Once I got introduced to Sandy, I changed everything. After being with the Division I program this year, Sandy was more intense than they were. So he was ready to play one-on-one, two-on-two, one-on-one to 100. It doesn't matter if you were seven feet, he still give you a game. Sparing nothing, attacking him as if he was the Kimbe Mutombo or someone. And he'd win most of the time. He did his thousand crunches every day in the corner, and then he would come over to you with this great energy, and be like, I just did a thousand crunches, so it's, you know, let's go. Sandy has a unique fashion statement. Known for 40 years, 35 or 36 of those years, he wears those blue Roadrunner sweatpants. Girl, look at that body. Girl, look at that body. The curly hair, the indecent old 1970s shorts. Those Converse sneakers that he always wore. His sock was his wallet. I don't know if it still is. <laughs> a basketball in one hand, a whistle hanging around. Neon orange, yellow, bright sweatpants. Is his hair real? Is it fake? I'm sexy and I know it.
In the 80s, Schechter was still growing. We were still a very small school, and there was no girls team at Schechter. Uh, Sandy, without batting an eyelash, just said, you want to play basketball, you're going to play with the boys. When we would encounter other schools and they would take issue with a girl on the team, Sandy always defended me, always made sure that I was comfortable. When Sandy came into my life, it was really important. At that point in time, I could have went either way. I could have been a drug dealer. I could have been locked up or in jail. Or I could have been somewhere dead. Sandy be driving in the station wagon and be like, where are you going to go? And I'd be like, I'm walking back to Newark. I get in the car, I would like have my head against the window, and he'd be trying to talk about basketball and what I need to do to get better. I know he probably don't know, but I was listening to everything he said. In between 10th and 11th grade, my dad passed away. A lot of people send condolences, but what I do remember is that Sandy would send a fruit basket, and that really touched my heart. Sandy really became a, a fatherly figure and, and a role model for me um, during the rest of my high school career and beyond. Sandy never ever distinguished that I was a girl on the guys team to the point that I often had to ask him even where I was supposed to change for games. He had forgotten about it. He really just thought of me as another player. I think out of all the guys he probably ever had, I think he was probably the toughest on me because of my situation. He kind of brought me around Solomon Schechter. And I know it's like 10 miles down the road, but it was truly a different world. I watched kids with two parents interact with their um, mom and dad. I watched, you know, right after school, before kids got on the court, they would, you know, have an hour of study hall. And I would say to Sandy sometimes driving back, like, man, you know, I wish I was in their situation. You know, I would love to have you know, two parents. Randy Foy has it, Griffin on the move. Oh, oh that's Randy Foy! <laughs> so Sandy was definitely like a father figure. When I got cut by the Milwaukee Bucks, the day before the season started, they were headed to Kansas City for the first game of the year. I was headed back to New Jersey. It just, it just seemed like if I wasn't good enough now, I'll never be good enough. It took some talking from Sandy to get me to even just go back to a gym. You know, Sandy coming over, yo, is EJ coming out to play today? No. You know, it took me a while because I was hurt. <laughs> I wanted it after a while. I can remember the day I graduated from college. I kind of looked at Sandy and said, everything that you have done for me on the court and off the court is the reason why I'm here today. My self-confidence and my ability to believe in myself, no matter what obstacles stood in front of me, was just unprecedented. I owe very much to him. My own personal message makes me cry a little bit, so I'll try to get the message out. You were there for me when my dad passed away, and you were there for me when my mom passed away. You've always been there for me, and I'll always continue to be there for you. He always said that one day, by you listening, you will have anything you want in life. And he helped me get here. This is Sandy yelling at me after I just committed a turnover and I cost us the game. I just have to get some spittle, first of all, on the side of my mouth. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You want it to sort of be a few feet away so you wouldn't get rained on. Come back! Come back! Come over here! What are you doing? What are you doing? Box out! How many times? You have to use your left hand. He throws his hand up and he does want to... I, I can't imitate the hair. <laughs> Sandy, get me. No. No, you're not coming out. 
I know more about basketball in my little pinky than most people do in their entire bodies. You should have had that! You move here, you move there, you move here! There are soldiers in Israel fighting in the 100 degree weather and you can't get in the ground and dive the ball! That's Sandy. Before a big game, I would feel a little bit nervous. Sandy would say to me, it's good to be nervous, and that's something that always stays with me, not just in basketball, but in school, it's, you'd say, it's good to be a little bit nervous. It's a great piece of advice. Basketball is sort of a microcosm of what life is. You, know? you win, you lose, you know, but it teaches you to get back on your feet, keep going. Sandy is teaching much more than uh, skills. Sandy's really teaching life lessons. What it is to be a good human being, what it is to be a mensch. Get one, need one. Those are lessons that kids will take far beyond the walls of this building. Congratulations, Sandy. Thank you, Sandy, for all that you have done. Thank you for your patience. You put in the work, you put in the time, more importantly, you put in the love. Bring it in. Roadrunners on three, let's go. One, two, three, Roadrunners! The amount of time, and the amount of dedication, the amount of, uh, the amount of love he has for the game, he doesn't ask for anything back. Sandy has never asked me for anything. He's never called and said, hey, I need you to give a speech here for me, or I need this, or I need that. What he wanted in return was that you apply yourself 1,000%. Yes, am I pleased? Yes but I'm not satisfied because there was a lot of little things at the end you got to be able to see. Sandy, congratulations on a well-deserved honoring, and I wish you all the best. I just want to say thank you. A mazel tov. God bless you. It's a huge honor to have a coordinator after you. You just have to realize what a gift you've been to all of us, taking these little Jewish kids and making us into strong Jewish men and women. Mazel tov, Sandy. Congratulations, Sandy. Congratulations, Sandy. Sandy, congratulations. We're all so lucky to have had you in our lives and to continue to have you in our lives. And, and you know, here's to another 40 years and a thousand more sit-ups each day.